Uh, yeah. right. <laughs> Hello, folks out there in Facebook land. You're watching no, the Dish I'm... on Dogs. We, we're going to go live two minutes, so we got to remember that we can say whatever we want now, but when the thing we can curse, we can say shit, we can say all kinds of things now, which is very natural for me. We can say hi to um, Pete Fucker. Pete Fucker. <laughs> hey, Pete Fucker and Trendy out there. Hi. Uh, that's the last time I can say that, so yeah, i got to be very careful. Because he's going to yell at you. Steve. We got Corey with us today, Corey Packer, the media guru. He's going to join us. He's gonna, we're going to talk about franchising. We're going to talk about our trip to Detroit. We're going next week. Our trip to Pittsburgh. We just came from there. So this is going to be a good show. We have our ambassador, Zooming Rosie. My ex-co-host, Jackie Bondanzo, <laughs> is here. Who, who quit, who, who quit months ago. She's an encore performance. She couldn't get enough of this. Couldn't get out of it. The beautiful and lovely Danielle Janace is behind the camera here. Newly promoted to director of training, correct? Big shot. She's getting new sure. new business cards. Right, uh, we're gonna go <laughs> but we're gonna go live here in a few minutes and I gotta behave myself because I have some old friends in Florida, they don't do this Facebook. They sit in their rocking chairs and I don't know, smoke pipes, I don't know what's in it, but, <laughs> so we got to be, you know, kind of, I have to be careful here, the Facebook Live, I'm not on Facebook, so I don't even know what's happening there. <laughs> what's the matter? Oh, that's so like the longest one <laughs> intro ever. Yeah, well, okay. we got to see. That was the intro before the intro. Yeah, that was well, I got to go over all this, that's no, the thing. No, I got to go now say the same it's stuff the balls. for different people, different things. Rick Flair, who's that? Pete, that's, that's this is, me. oh Jesus, Ric Flair. I put that, that. Oh, you there. did? Yeah. That's me walking into the radio Oh, I got tonight. you. Oh, yeah, that's I Rick see. Flair. All right. Oh, so you're 443. I got to remember that now, right? Yeah. I, gotta, I don't have you in my phone. Lucky, doesn't have your phone number yet. He did at one point when we were dealing with Boomer. I was yeah. calling like every day. Oh, and then he must have deleted my phone. No, I, I, you, maybe you got a different... Uh, <laughs> I haven't had this thing in 15 years. <laughs> maybe you got a different number. Well, let's see. I'm going to put in. It's coming up, the number, so you don't have it. No, it's, yeah. It's He's like, you're the 443 number, right? Oh, no, I got Cor Corinne, who screws me up with her name, Corinne, with the E. Who's the name of the government? Corinne. It's an N, an E, and the E after the thing. Should I put these on? I don't need them. You don't need them. We can hear him just yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, yes. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Oh, shit. <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah. <laughs> Get it all out. Get all the curses out now. This guy hates me. Five, four, three. Welcome everybody, welcome to the Dish on Dogs, the dog show about, no, it's the show, it's the show about dog behavior, alright, alright, it's a long night, it's 8 o'clock, it's past my bedtime, I'm your host, Mike Gould, founder and mayor of Houndstown USA, home to the happiest dogs on earth. For those of you who don't know, Houndstown USA is a fully interactive doggy daycare, overnight uh, boarding facility, full service spa. I got this down. We have some special guests today. We're going to join uh, our brand director. First of all, why is Houndstown USA home to the happiest dogs? I say it a lot. Tonight you're going to find out why it's the home to the happiest dogs. What separates us? Uh, so the Dish on Dogs, it's the show for those of you listening. Every night we have a different topic, or every Monday, every week. Thank you, Jackie Bondanza, by the way, who just joined us. My ex-co-host is, is here. We have our ambassador, dog ambassador, Rosie, the two-legged dog. Uh, so we have a lot of fun. For you guys on Facebook, stay with us on our seven-minute break, and Zooming Rosie's going to zoom around the airport here. So, so the Dish on Dogs, it so kind of says it all in the title, the Dish on Dogs. We dish out information about dogs. We answer the questions of why dogs dig. They bury their bone. We learned that today. Wait, dogs dig. They jump. They hump. They lick their genitals. Why do they lick their genitals? These are eternal questions that we answer here. They lick their genitals. You, you all probably obviously know that, right? Why don't you, let's back it up. Go ahead. We talk about genitals. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's introduce Corey. All right. Let's introduce Corey. Okay, so, yes. 
So <laughs> with us tonight, Corey Packer is the director of uh, brand director. Yeah. Yep. Franchise. So he's so, the media guru. Media guru. He's there's only one person in the world cooler than Mike Gould, the mayor of Poundstown, and that's <laughs> that's Corey Packer. Yes. So yeah, he's he's wow. as cool as can be. Wow, so so welcome to nice. welcome to our show, my friend. Thank you. So you do amazing things. How do I know these? Because we see the results. So you promote our brand, and you've been working just a little bit about your background. And you know why you're associated with us. You have a lot of opportunities out there. You do it. You have an amazing background in, in what you do. And so, tell us about yourself, and then talk 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 to us about Houndstown USA. Sure. Yeah. So I know a little bit about the the genital thing. That Licking. Like, yeah, right. No, I okay. know nothing of that actually. Okay. Um. Anyway, my background, I just like saying. I just like I mean, to it's, say. It's like a bad joke that he just said. But it's like. Not, yeah, it's let's just get it out there. The punchline there. still has not been delivered. Just right, yet. it's going to deliver. So first of all, I like to say it. It's something funny. I can say it seriously, but I'm laughing inside. So there's a genital sniff. Why do dogs do it? Why do dogs lick their genitals? Because they can. That's the punchline. All right, let's go. <laughs> because pick they can. Right. So <laughs> let's go. Let's go back with I, our. I warned our, Jackie of our like. Yeah. Dialogue. Yeah. yeah. And we got to watch ourselves. So yeah. by the way, before I. We, he does a podcast. So podcast, for those of you who don't know, we'll get into that. This is going to be a little random. So Corey does his own podcast, and he invited me on. And it's a whole different thing than regular radio because there's no censorship. So I kind of describe it as verbal skinny dipping. Yeah. It's it's liberating, right? Yeah. You can go there, and you don't have to be so uptight. And I had yeah. a great experience with that. Yeah, so go ahead. Time. Tell so us about everything. So, so my background is, is film by trade. So cinematography, uh, what you see on the big screen or on TV, what it looks like, the colors and all that stuff. That's my traditional background. But I kind of like doubled down when I moved to New York like a couple years ago because I was like, I don't want to be in the union and like do all the film crap and all that stuff because they, they pay oh, really? terribly. Oh. Unless if you, you know, you've been there for a long time or you right. have a high position right. or whatever. Okay, so they don't, they don't pay, pay well. So I, I doubled down on like digital media and stuff like that for businesses and stuff. So I got a job. I was the creative director for I Love Kickboxing, which is a pretty big uh, boutique fitness franchise that has a t hundreds of locations around the country. Did that for a couple of years, then moved to Charlotte, opened up uh, Powerhouse Marketing, which is a digital marketing agency, which was what led me to Jackie through a, um, a friend of ours. A, a, a Actually a franchisee, one of our franchisees. Colleen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, she's you're right. Garden she's City. the owner of Palestine Garden yeah. City. So she put us in contact, and we. it took us like six months to kind of nurture the relationship and stuff like that to really like have you guys kind of trust us to yeah. know what we're doing. It took a lot of you talking yeah. to <laughs> get me convinced that you actually knew what Just you were talking it. about. Yeah. Yeah. So um, any, anyways, in a nutshell, here we are almost a year later where I'm basically full-time with Houndstown, um, and we're getting insane results for these right. locations so and we're going to talk about that in a little while yeah. so yeah so so i'm so impressed by what you do it really is amazing the technological part of it the technology and the way you stay ahead of the curve but uh so so what when you came to houndstown what did you like about it that you found that why, why would you why'd you accept the offer to work for us because oh. we feel very privileged that we were able to recruit you so it wasn't even like i, I kind of like I'm a big picture type of, so, well, at least in this instance, I'm a big picture type of guy because mm -hmm. I told um, my my business partners, like even before I even talked to Jackie, I was like, this is like a huge opportunity, not for just us, but for Houndstown. And I just saw everything good that Houndstown is doing that the competitors and other businesses are literally not doing or not doing it like the right way. And I just like, like you guys are really kind of sold it. Like you, I mean, you're, you know, you're insane. No words. Yeah, yet. there's no words. So, <laughs> but like, I loved it. And like, but he'll I, provide them anyway. Yeah, exactly. But I just couldn't like, I couldn't really like, I was just blown away by like my experience working, not even as like a client or because I'm not a customer. I didn't, we don't have a, a house town in DC. Right. So like, I don't get that experience, but just seeing and talking to all the people and interviewing people and hearing their stories and just seeing like 
how amazing you guys are and what you've done. It's just like, that's why. But, but you know, and it's funny you say that because the, the, the feelings are mutual because we have a kind of a high energy. I think one, I mean, it's undeniable that we're passionate about what we sure. do. We live and breathe this 365 days a year. Uh, this is what we do. And we have that high energy. So when we seek out franchisees and anybody else that we're working with, uh, we're looking for that same energy. And I can tell you, you have that that crazy, passionate yeah. energy. We know, so it just comes through. We don't have to look at a resume. We didn't have to look exactly. at your Price is Right uh, tape or whatever. <laughs> Was it the oh, Price yes. is Right? No, yeah, the Price is Right. Right, yeah, here's a far star far. on the Price is Right, right. by the way. So we didn't have to look at any of these things, right? We didn't, you didn't come for like a job interview. You obviously, you don't wear a suit and tie. Suit, yeah. You don't, look, you know, and you know, we talk about, you know, the funny thing is, I'm gonna say this really honestly, so, you know, we, as humans, stereotype things, right? You oh, think sure. of people, so if you're thinking, it's Corey sitting in here and he's the brand director and he has this ridiculous yeah. amount of experience in this industry, you might not think he's tattooed all yeah. over the place, he's in his flannel and he's sitting here and we're <laughs> laughing and he's got scotch in his coffee like I do. <laughs> so you wouldn't think that, you know? So that that's what... But, on the same token, we don't discriminate against dogs. So the point of the matter is we judge and feel energy. So that's what we're all about is yeah. judging energy. So that's, it, so, so the, I guess that, that is the point. So you found us, we found you, and we're so excited about, so the, the great thing, and this is the funny part about resumes, they don't mean anything. Yeah. I don't care, care where you went to school, what you did is what you do now. So tell us a little bit, what are you doing for our brand, Houndstown? So, I couldn't, first off, I couldn't agree with you more about the resume thing. Actually, I've never had a company ask me, oh, where'd you go to school? Or what? You know, let me see. It's all, oh, right. it's all, uh, BS. it's all, uh, it's BS. Yeah, it's whatever. Right. But what I'm, I'm doing for the brand is mm -hmm. basically creating and telling the stories of the clients, the customers, the dogs, the, the, the things that people can't see that aren't clients, right? So, like, if, if, you have a population of people that aren't clients of Houndstown, we need to be able to show every of those people, every one of those people, what you guys are about. So that's kind of, that's exactly what I'm doing, is I'm taking this content that we've created together and, and publishing it and putting it out there to the masses so they then say, oh, well, what is this you can place? Help build the brand. Exactly. Yeah. And so. one of the like few, and I don't really follow what you guys do, Jackie. You know, you guys are doing behind the scenes things yeah. and stuff. But one thing that I, the only thing I really asked for was to make everything fun because Houndstown yeah. is a fun brand. It's not serious. We're not psychoanalyzing dogs and their tails wagging in a certain direction if they were hugged by their mother or not. We want dogs to come to our facilities. And as I say, hump, jump, and dump, have a blast, and have fun. So that was the only kind of criteria I, I wanted to, for you to do. Whatever you produced had to be fun. It's not so serious. Yeah. So do you, do you, I mean, the commercial that we shot. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny because, like I said, I was down in Atlanta recently, and I used this phrase, hump, jump, and dump. The people down there laughed hysterically. They spit out their coffee. <laughs> Yet other people found it offensive. Not many, but just one or two people. And I'm like... Right. It's, well, that's it, why it's important. It's so important to have a sense of humor. For we gotta have a sense of humor. Down, yeah. That's a huge part of our brand. So listen to what we're doing. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna take a two minute break. We're gonna stay on Facebook. Shout out. We'll, we'll come back and we'll reintroduce Corey, Jackie, Zooming Rosie. We'll be back in two minutes. Two minutes. Perfect timing. What? Good timing. He's been doing this for about three years. <laughs> really? Yeah. Jesus. He's Can got he still hear me? Can he still hear me? Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, not here. I thought you meant oh, in there. No. Shit. No. They can hear you. Hey, hey shit. Hey, fuck. Hey, 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 suck it. Hey. Oh, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> Who used to do that? <laughs> you hey. used to do that. <laughs> Wait, do Danielle, you, I just said something I no, shouldn't have said. What, yeah. Uh, I can't what? tell you now. She, I got you. Blaming it on her? I will because she did. We'll That's when she was drunk at the point when. You, <laughs> oh, wait, you, what did he say? I didn't hear. I can't say it. I yelled at me. I'll write it down. Write right. It down. So write it down. Oh. Did anybody else hear? <laughs> Who's nobody's listening? Thank God. <laughs> Everybody's no, got a like. Uh, Cody. <laughs> Remember you used to say that all the time. That's all she said. That's all she said. I do it now. I get in trouble. All right. Wow, we don't want to. That's not part of our brand. I know, but yeah, we're off brand. Oh, I see. Oh, we're off right. brand. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. What's people saying? Uh, Cody's on. Joe's Cody. On, Colleen's on. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Colleen. Here's your buddy over here, Colleen. Colleen. 
Eileen by Vanza? Yeah, my oh, mom. Oh, you <laughs> Hi, Mom. Um, we got a good group of people. Let's see. <laughs> what was I going to say? I was thinking of something. Cody's down there. I wonder if Megan... I want to give a shout out to all of them, Joe, Cody. So let's talk about Pittsburgh in the second, the opening sure. of Pittsburgh. Let me introduce, I got to say hello to some people. I was very offended by that. <laughs> I got to watch, I'm sorry, I have this freedom of Facebook. Oh, mother in heaven, I got to watch. Come on, everybody grow up a little bit, right? Or am I like, what's that? Am I good? Yeah, you're doing great. You're <laughs> natural. You know that, you just want that. You want Your ego can't be blown up anymore. I do the same to you, so I mean, in five, four, three. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould, mayor of Houndstown, USA, home to the absolutely happiest dogs on earth. We're going to explore that in a little while. Why? Just before I get going here, I, I'm a little nervous. I got a very prestige, two, several prestigious guests here. And uh, so I, I have Zooming Rosie with me. She's the ambassador to Houndstown. I got the very lo lovely Jackie Bondanza. Uh, and of course, Corey Packer, our brand director, who's really, he's kind of a guru of, of this whole genre. Is that a good word, genre? Sure. Okay. So, but before I do, I got to give my shout outs, of course, to my friend Joan and Tom Sullivan. She is the matriarch of the Sullivan family down in Beverly Hills, not California, Beverly Hills, Florida. Not quite the same, but they're there and they're, <laughs> they're, they're faithful, faithful listeners. Uh, and then, of course, I know that Kristen and Pete in Detroit are listening. Oh, they are? Oh, yeah. Well, they are. There they are. What, what, what's Danielle Sam's saying? Sam's on, too, from Pittsburgh. Oh, Sam, your Sam, friend Sam. Your friend Sam, that you offended. <laughs> <laughs> that you said smells good? Sounds about oh, Sam! <laughs> Sam, that's all you had to say. Sam from Pittsburgh. <laughs> the nicest smelling human being I've ever felt met in my I've life. Never felt I've never felt that. was Sorry, Sam, that was a Freudian slip. All right, so, oh all right, let me regroup here. I got to get into, yeah. By the way, everyone, this is why I quit the show. Yeah, she quit on me. She didn't want to get sued. She wanted to be home drinking wine. So, right, she didn't want to get sued. All right, so all my friends are listening. Yes, Sam, I love. You name like three people. No. No. Joe and Cody from Pittsburgh. Joe and Cody. Right. Colleen. Colleen. Colleen and Ann. My mom. My mom. Right. Who's in Florida also. She's, She's down there in Tampa. Florida. Faithful listener, so Eileen. We've got 10 or 12 people. All right. Good. All right. All right. So let's get back to reality. what the hell yes. we talk. All right. Let's get back to reality. So we're going to talk to Corey Packer, our brand director. Um, so let's talk about, while we're on the topic of Joe, Cody, all of our friends, Sam, Megan, all of our friends, Lauren, I know them all, Mike, I know them all out in Pittsburgh. So we were just out there and we did our two-week training out there because they had their grand opening on Penn Avenue in Pittsburgh. So anybody listening, this is probably, it, not probably, it's the nicest doggy daycare facility in, in Pittsburgh by far. And it's a fact. If you don't believe me, what do you do? Go try it out. They'll give you a free day of daycare. You make your judgments yourself. I don't have to promote it. You do it for yourself. Um, so they're listening. And we did our training. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's fun to watch these businesses develop. That's really what our passion is, to take these things and really see how they develop and expand and grow. The most, the backbone of that is... Corey, what he does. Corey develops, obviously nowadays, of course, just by virtue we're on Facebook. This is a whole new, is that what we call it? Facebook, right? It yes, is Facebook. I get it mixed up, FaceTime, <laughs> Facebook. So this is an amazing thing. So just for an example, so Joe and, and Cody out there, they're doing their, what we call temperament evaluations, where dogs come to our new places and we do a meet and greet, make sure that your dogs are gonna have fun in our facilities. They're not gonna be stressed out, that they're gonna have a good experience. And we're opening next week in Detroit, Detroit, Metro Detroit. We're opening this 11,000 square foot mega Houndstown. It's massive. It's massive. It's a massive, it's, it's the biggest by far doggy daycare, in, huge indoor play areas. So before we even, here's the most impressive thing about this. And I, I'm an old man, so back in the day, you know, we put an ad in the yellow pages or something. And yeah. uh, so now we're, we're not even there yet. And I think you were saying before the break, oh, before we went on the air, what, how did you, what's happening out in Detroit? 
Um, well, Detroit, particularly right now, has, uh, I think we're at 23, 23 evals right now. Oh, they, so they're so they're opening no, Saturday, November second, yeah. and our goal as a brand, as we open in these new markets where Houndstown is not known at all, our goal is to uh, roll the brand out, you know, as quickly as possible, and get the franchisees a couple dozen evaluations before they even open their doors. So that is what we rolled out starting with Pittsburgh. And I think they did 12 or 13 evals in that first couple of days they opened. We have had an even bigger success in Detroit because we tweaked the system a little bit and how we run the ads. Um, This is all social media, um, which is really crazy that we're reaching so many people and so many potential customers on social media. So you've found this kind of hack yeah, to like really hack. target people that are fitting our profile that are gonna come in and be really good potential customers for our, all of our franchisees. So for Detroit, I think we're already up to like 23 Great. evaluations in the first three days that they're open. So our goal and what you've been working on, Corey, really is making sure that we get as m- much traction as possible so that these franchisees are opening their doors and they've got customers waiting outside. Yeah. You know, our overall goal is to get people up and running and to cash flow positive and making money as quickly as possible. Yeah. So in my mind, your a big part of your role is to do that and to, you know, get people get people the customers that they need to to, to get them making money as quickly as possible yeah well what the what the way that we're doing it is we're not we're not like putting stuff in the yellow pages and hoping someone reads it the, the stuff that we're putting out there the exact people that we want to see the ad will only see the ad and at the time that they're in the buying process they're gonna they're more than likely gonna buy than not and buy, I mean, click the ad and then respond right. immediately. So they're they're not just like, you know, we're not just throwing stuff on the wall and seeing what sticks. We are literally only targeting the people that are exactly Houndstown material. Right. It's a very specific, it's very specific. program yeah. that right. requires months and months of really work on your end yeah. to, to, to weed through all of the pe- potential people. There's hundreds of thousands of people in Pittsburgh yep. and Detroit, and we're, we're, we're weeding through that to target just the right cost- customers that are going to come right. in. So we're not wasting money. And I think for Pittsburgh, a couple hundred dollars we spent $300. on $300 right. to get, a, you know, at least a dozen of these evals in the door. Detroit, I think we're even, we spent maybe close to 500. It's close to five, but. But we've got 23 people potentially coming in. Yeah, so, safe. you know, as a brand, our role is to constantly be staying on top of this and to be, be, be providing franchisees with customers and customer flow at the lowest possible cost, cost to them. Exactly. Right. And I can't help but think that all of these efforts that everybody does, because we are developing our team, and I can't, we were voted just recently the number 11th fastest growing franchise in the country. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were. We got so, some sort of award right. from franchise uh, yeah. help. I, I think I, I, we're number eleven out of twelve. I think my yeah, no, 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 that's eleven out of eleven. No, that's my son in school. No, uh, no, 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 no. We really did. We, it was, it, you know, obviously it, it, it's some survey, but we were. And the bottom line is whether you, we have these awards or we don't have these awards. The truth is, so what Corey is saying and doing is more importantly not saying we see the results. Once the dogs or the customers come in the door. It's the rest of the team's jobs to capture them and make the experience, which we do. And that's really what's phenomenal to me. So when I talk about, you know, Houndstown, I just founded this. Everything else is the people that are participating, the franchisees, the customers, all of our employees. We have this system down. So I think our conversion rate is like, what what is it? 90. 90. So can you imagine that for every 10 dogs that come for our temperament evaluation, nine of them become customers. And the other one is probably, probably, right. And the other one is probably one of our competitors coming in to see what we're doing. So we have this amazing conversion rate. And and, and we'll talk in the next segment. After this, on the break, for those of you on uh, 
Facebook. We're going to just do a little zo video of Zooming Rosie. And then when we'll come back and talk about these differentiators, you quite, there's all these big words these days. Yeah. Of, you know, uh, we're going to talk about that. And then in the fourth segment, we're going to talk about Detroit and this unique partnership we're creating with the Michigan Humane Society. And this is, is my hopes is this is going to be a national campaign. I'm flying out to Michigan on Thursday to meet with the Humane Society, Michigan Humane Society. Mm -hmm. And if everything goes well, they will be a partnership with Houndstown all over the country. Wow. That's so yeah. that's really yeah, cool. That's a great brand. And that's Houndstown that's Charities is yeah. going to be involved in that. And speaking of Houndstown Charities, Zooming Rosie, of course, we, we rescued her. This poor dog was abused, beaten, something. I, yeah, that's that's what they say. That's, that's what, what they, they say, say, but she doesn't know it. She's an inspiration. You watch this, and then don't worry about stubbing your toe when you're going to the bathroom tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. That was amazing. <laughs> All right, let's go, folks. All you kids. Facebook land. Oh, she was falling asleep. I know. We gotta wake her up. So we want to show you zooming Rosie because she is an inspiration. First, she's gonna zoom with or without her. And this isn't a sad story. This is what I tell people. People, humans look at Rosie and go, ah, oh, well, she's got a wheelchair. This isn't an awe story. This is a wow story. Come on, let's go out here and let her zoom around. Let me grab, can you grab her wheelchair, Corey? So, just put her on the ground. Five, yes. So she don't get road rash, we put her on the top. Here she comes, here's my little girl. So. This is a happy dog. Let me see if I can sit down. That oh, was good girl. Oh, she it, yeah, this is one way. woman that truly loves me, right? Mm -hmm. He's zooming Rosie. Why? Yeah, I and the best part is she goes into the playroom without her wheelchair sometimes, not always, because it's not always good for her. But but she runs around and she interacts and she plays with the other dogs and she doesn't need two legs or wheelchair. So it's kind of amazing to see how the dogs adapt once they get into this social pack environment. Right, so let's just, and so she, she has no feelings in her legs, right? But again, that's not an awe story. She is cool, right? She'll follow me, she's a faithful companion. And the first reaction people have, and this talk, this goes to people with disability. When you look at a dog like that, look, she's walking, a miracle. Look, there's a miracle at the MacArthur Airport, she's walking. So, she's so fast, too. She, she's right. right. So we found her up in the Hollywood Hills. She was zooming around. I mean, giving her nice, good lamb lung helps the matter. She, that helps her love me. This is like giving a, a woman diamonds. <laughs> Ow, Jesus Christ. This is lamb lung. You want, we call it canine crack. It's good stuff. Let's put her in a buggy and see if... Uh... Come on, Rosie, you want to zoom in? Come on. Come on. So this is zooming Rosie. This is part of Houndstown Charity. This is the type of dog that can come to Houndstown. Doggy daycare. And actually, when she was first rescued by um, uh, her rescue in LA, she didn't have a wheelchair at all because she came from Armenia. Um, and Eddie's Wheels fitted her with a wheelchair for free. So that's really been great for her. She's been uh, around. Kind of. She's. Rose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, Rose. Good girl. So the point is, she can do this day in and day out. She can go up mountains, down mountains. She's nonstop. This is her at 8.30 at night. You have to be in a daycare all day. So this is a, if you're not inspired by this, don't feel bad for her. Learn from her. Learn. This is, no complaints there. Zooming Rosie. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, what more can we say? Oh, a tail. She, she, she's a mess. She obviously has a diaper on. She chews a tail. I mean, she's a mess. I told, I told Jackie, let's cut her tail off. She has no feeling in her back leg. I'm only kidding. I love, by the way, I love Zooming Rosie, and let's see if she loves me. Look at her. She loves Pop. She loves the crack, but so anyway, <laughs> this is a Houndstown charity, a, pr a perfect example of just the animal brain and how it, she's not feeling sorry for herself. She doesn't even know anything's wrong with her. Zooming Rosie. She's got her own Instagram page. Zooming Rosie. Zooming Rosie. Hi, baby. Let's see. We can go for a walk. But but think of your pet at home right now. Think here we are at an airport. There's distractions. There's PA systems. Your dog at home would pro I don't know that they wouldn't be as stable and sound and secure. Rose, yeah. Right. The ironic part is she's not really afraid of anything. She 
has grown clear. Rose. So think of that, what Jackie just said. She has no fear. So if you think of her life where she was supposedly uh, abused by somebody, she has no fear of anybody, right? So she's perfectly social, So which is amazing. Come on, Rose. Rosie. You can make her a TSA door. She crawls up in a crate tonight, and she'll sleep for eight, nine, 10, 11 hours, perfectly fine. It's actually the benefit of it, we can, we, she, now nah, never mind. Let's go in, our show's almost <laughs> over. Oh, Lumi Rose, fish on dogs. Come on, honey, good work. Good work, Rose, come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's the sound she makes. <laughs> All right, we're moving along. Two more segments. Pete and Kristen are watching now. Trendy BS. I hope you Thursday morning, nine wow. o'clock. Got to really get like, ready. She was like, got a lot of work to why, do. Why does it call? Who is this trendy person? <laughs> <laughs> it's Kristen. But it's funny. When I started seeing some of your Facebook posts, I thought you guys literally were losing your mind by putting these masks around. I, I didn't want. No, I don't I want think the. It's funny. I think it's I, hysterical. I think it's a good example of like how this is a stressful time, but you can still maintain your sense of humor and. Right, they do have that, fun. but you, well, drugs ha play a big role in there. No, no I'm only just kidding. 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 <laughs> I gotta be so PC. Yeah, right. Yeah, Danielle and I were talking PC. about that when we were coming back. It's hard for me. I'm old. I can't keep up with all the PC-ness. It's hard. I don't want I want to respect everybody. Really, I do. But I just, it's hard. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, because dogs are, dogs are easy. They're just dogs, right? So They don't talk. So. They, 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 well, they just, you just treat them with respect, and that's the whole point of this, I think. It's just so much complications in our world. Yeah, people suck. That's the name of the show is going to be, the People <laughs> Suck Show. Right. The more people we meet, the more we like dogs. That's, that's, exactly. <laughs> that's what you said today in the bio. I did? Okay. I need to see that before yeah, it comes out. It's definitely not going <laughs> yeah, some of these things have to be... Uh, 30 seconds. They have to be, what do you call it, censored, I guess. Yeah. But we just want to have fun. That's the whole point. We're just having fun. Dogs, that's all they want to do. They don't, they're not that serious. They don't take life seriously, as you can see with Rosie. She just wants to run around and have me loved. And look at her. It gets me crazy sometimes. You know, a lot of times we talk on the sh show about this toxicity of humans and how, how they really do so. <laughs> Nobody here, what? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould, mayor of Houndstown, USA, home to the happiest dogs on earth. We have our good friend and brand director, Corey Packer, with us. We have Zooming Rosie, our two-legged canine, amb canine ambassador to Houndstown. Why is she the ambassador? If you guys watched the, the seven-minute, uh, she's running around the airport like a lunatic. She has no <laughs> legs. She chews her tail. She's a mess, but she's a happy, one of the happiest dogs on earth. That's why she's here. And she has a very, uh, you know, I guess a human a sad story. She was abused in Armenia. Is that right, Jackie Bondanza? Yes. Armenia. She was supposedly beaten with a stick. I don't know if any of these stories are true, but the truth of the matter is, for sure, in this, the dogs live in this moment of time, right? They're not thinking about yesterday. They're not thinking about Christmas. They're thinking about her experience running around the airport right now a few minutes ago and now sitting in Jackie's lap. So this is what makes dogs inspirational. They should make do uh, you in inspire you and the folks listening. Okay, so anyway, Corey Packer, what did Jackie tell everybody where we're at? I mean, things I can't even keep up with. I just came back from five states. I didn't know what time zone I was in. I was in Atlanta. Or, uh, no, seriously. All of the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. No. Right, you were not in any different. <laughs> oh, so I already felt body. like that. <laughs> but maybe that was just my... I, well, I, we've been traveling around, you know, we, we've been super busy opening and prepping to open 
um, all of these locations. So we had the Houndstown Pittsburgh Strip District uh, that opened on October 5th, and there, Cody and Joe are the franchisees. There are just really killing it. Yeah, they're crushing it. Just you know, it's to me, it's it's very moving to walk into a new store for the first time and to see how much they've taken the brand and taken it seriously and how well they've represented Houndstown, especially when it's opening in a brand new market. And Joe, uh, the franchisee, just completely delivered with that. And I think that, that that is definitely part of the reason why they've been so successful in the just the two weeks they've been open. Yeah. So we're also gearing up to open Houndstown Metro Detroit. Again, that's going to be like incredible experience just from seeing the photos that Pete and Kristen, yeah, the franchisees, are. Yeah. So we're excited to see that. But we've also been prepping to uh, open in Orlando, Atlanta, Nashville, North Carolina, second location in Pittsburgh, Bergen and Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia we've just, got a new yeah. franchisee in North Bergen who's hopefully going to be opening next year. So we have our plate full, we but have our plate full. we are... Um, you know, growing our support and our corporate team, and I think that's one of the main reasons, you know, that you're now here full time is because it's so important to us that we deliver to our franchisees um, what we're expected to, and that is support every single day, troubleshooting, and and it's also uh, brand growth and brand recognition in the market before they open. So. We always strive to take some of that stress and pressure away from them so they can focus on, you know, their build out and running around and getting the building ready. Um, and we focus on, you know, getting people to the store that first that first weekend or week or a couple months that they're in business. So that's what we've been all been doing. Right. What do you find so the most challenging for this? This is new for you, our brand. The the you, the work you do is not new, but do, applying it to Houndstown uh, compared to other franchises you work with, what's been, been your biggest challenge? I know you have to deal with franchisees, yeah. and you know we have a a, pl- a a range, right? Everybody's I, I, we love all of them, but they all have different personalities. They come from completely different backgrounds, and and it's kind of amazing. And sometimes it's a little difficult, I sure. think, personally, because I deal with franchisees every day. And we love them. They're part of our family, actually. But you know, they have different personalities, just like I have, you know, I'm sure they feel, you know, they have to deal with me sometimes, and that can't be fun. What's your challenge? Honestly, it's not so much a challenge because, I mean, you're selling the, the experience that Housetown gives to, to the community and, and, and what it does for dogs. That's the easy part because, you know, when you're dealing with dogs and stuff like that, you're basically dealing with, you know, some people's like children. I'm using air quotes for listeners. Right. Um, and so like it's it's kind of easy actually. The hardest part is kind of, you know, making sure that there's so much stuff to do on social media and not just running the ads and following up with the people and making sure this person likes his page and just creating the group. There's like a hundred different things and you have to do them all collectively for it to work and getting someone who maybe not you know might not be so savvy in social media because it changes every like six me months. i have no clue what exactly. you're doing you don't even no know clue i don't even know how to do this yeah right I, no but i wouldn't i'll tell you whoa 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 i wouldn't be, <laughs> I wouldn't be a bad franchisee because what i don't know you're other people for know it, for sure right? so that that is yeah yeah no, no so so that's the hardest part is like getting certain people to do everything because right. the only way that it works is if everything is on is, is, exactly. is going to all cylinders exactly and it is complicated and i understand and you know just like the cu- customers have to trust us that's a huge part of people bringing their beloved pets to us is yeah. they trust us because we're very tra- straightforward very transparent franchisees have to trust us you know we're we're in, we're not infallible we make mistakes everybody makes mistakes and so we're not perfect by any stretch of imagination but we work hard towards perfection and we learn from as you said as Jackie said we learn from Pittsburgh we're going to learn from Detroit oh, yeah. and we're going to add these things but one comment I want to make because a lot of times people don't even really know what franchising is and I'll be honest so, so there's obviously mom and pop stores right and, and it's kind of, it's re- personally sad to me that there aren't mom and pop stores anymore, but they really can't exist. So when you travel now anywhere, there's no, there's very few mom and pops that can survive. And it, it, there's a sadness to me because that's how I started as a mom and pop. Yeah. But 
The truth of the matter is, franchising or Houndstown franchising, it is a mom and pop. It's, mom and pop. it's a it's completely mom and pop. Because, and it has to be mom and pop for this reason, pet care corporations can't provide pet care. They just can't do it. They're caught up in corporate crap, they, their bottom lines, and they can't. So we, this is really the perfect marriage. And then on the other side, mom and pops could never afford what you do and whatever all of our other teams yes. do. So, so they're getting the benefit of this team of people, this passionate team of people that are out there. And yet they're the mom, this is their business. So yes. you say, Pittsburgh is Joe's business. And they make it, what I like, Jack, you said, they make it, Pittsburgh is a cool city. Yeah. And they introduce elements. So it's not they a cookie cut. Yeah, yeah, but every every franchise you go to, you'll have the same experience. You're going to know you're in the Houndstown, but you're also going to see elements of that particular city. So it's, it's really cool because these people are from Pittsburgh. We're not, right? We just come in so they know their city and they're proud of their city, kind of what Jackie was saying. It's like coming to somebody's house and they're proud of what they've done. And they should be. And that makes do. a huge difference. You know, we were just talking about, before we came to the show, uh, PetSmart and how they still breed discriminate. We saw something on Facebook about a little, little pit, pit bull puppy, puppy who got rejected for daycare because he looked like a pit bull. Yeah. These are stories we hear a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I think... What makes Houndstown different from almost every other pet care, interactive pet care facility out there is that we really are a small business backed by a business model that has been working and tweaked for tw and in operation and successful for more than 20 years. So we have a very unique uh, position, you know, especially when it comes to our competitors. Oh, yeah. And we were pioneers in this business, although we weren't franchising, but we right. started this in, in the 2000, 1999, I began, you know, we started our first location. It wasn't a franchise. But back in 1999, if you said doggy daycare, people looked at you like you were out of your mind because yeah. nobody, they, they, people were like, I'm going to pay you to watch my dog today? Yeah. That's insanity. And now, doggy daycare is a necessity. It's not a luxury because our society has changed. So we have working couples now, the economy changed. So doggy daycare isn't just a fluffy place for people to go because they feel guilty. They need us. Our core customer, our police, firemen, teachers, the whole gamut. Now I see construction because the economy is so good right now. And I laugh because now we have these construction workers pull into our park yeah, lot, funny. right? It's a, like they're 300 pound guys with big beards and they, <laughs> they pull in and they dog. got this yeah, tiny little dog. dog. Yeah. yeah. And it makes me laugh because honestly, 15, 10 years ago, construction workers certainly weren't, they, they just, that wasn't their thing, bringing their dogs yeah, to doggy course. daycare. So it's just funny. And the beauty of Houndstown USA is we we address the recession because we're we're priced right. Everything is good. So when and if not when it will occur a recession, people still need doggy daycare. So they're going to come to the place that's very straightforward. There's no BS. There's no upselling. And uh, so you know, I talk to people. They come from another pet care facility. They said they need an accountant to figure out their bill. It started out as say twenty five dollars a day with all the add ons and everything. Insane. We're going to take our break again. Then we're going to come back. We're going to talk to Corey Packer, the coolest guy on earth besides me, about uh, what he does and how he's pre <laughs> we've been, we've been oh, we prepping got We got that for the past three seconds. All right, we're going to be back. Stay, stay well, in real. We'll come back. For real. Well, we talked a lot. What else you want to talk about? Oh, okay. You got a good sense of humor, Jackie. She's kidding. Um, so. Talk about the Michigan Humane Society. Yes, of course, this ties in now to the Houndstown charity. And then you can let Corey talk about the podcast. Oh, podcast, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. It's hot, but that's good. All right, so then we're going to pack up, go home. Could you imagine? What? It is actually. That's not. That's not actually. Oh. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> no, Ashley's done with us. She gets just. So I got it. It's great to hear Jackie on the show again. She brings class and knowledge from a different perspective. Mm. Who's nice. Who's that? I got my friend Tom Good. Sullivan. Good. Yes, Tom Sullivan. Oh no, he's 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 not on Facebook, right? No, he's not on Facebook. 
in class and intelligence, he's a kiss ass is what he is. It doesn't mean class and intelligence. He can't even... That's not very nice. No. It's not. All right, I got to talk about Sarah, the Brookhaven Animal Shelter Dog. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to wind up and what we, we're going to talk about the podcast. What's the name of your podcast? Mine? Yeah. Um, E4 Explicit Podcast. What is it? <laughs> We're on it. It's called the Mike Gold Show. Yeah. All right. E4 Explicit. I got called you. I got called Michael Gold today. When I had to change rooms. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, Master Gold. I'm like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they probably have a lot of notes in this program. Yeah, that's kind of dude. Yeah. yeah. I forgot I was him, so. Are you going to change yours because someone's smoking in this room? Yes, yeah, I'm smoking underneath my room. It made my holy. Really? Yeah, I was like, that's like a wall. In five. Yeah. Four. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould, mayor of Houndstown, USA. The good news is this is our last segment. We're winding down. Uh, for those of you who are still awake, uh, it was kind of shocking. All right, so, yeah, so the Dish on Dogs is a show about dog behavior. If you listen, go back to our old shows. Uh, we always have a dog here. We try to when we do it live, and we talk about one of the things we talk about is Houndstown Charities. Uh, but I want to reintroduce, before we talk about Houndstown Charities, Corey Packer is here, our media guru and uh, brand director for Houndstown. So now, the next thing we're going to do, and he's also a podcast star. Yeah, oh, podcast, yeah. He's a podcast star, so forget the, uh, <laughs> what was that show, Come On Down, Price is Price Right, is right. right. <laughs> so he's a celebrity in his own right. So, talk about podcast, and we're going to try to introduce that what's the benefits of it i mean we're going to do our radio show of course sure. because there's old people down in florida that don't yeah. they, they wouldn't know what a hell a podcast yeah, is so explain that because my friend tom sullivan is listening yeah. with his mom they don't so how do we talk about podcasts right, a lot of pressure tom a sullivan and from, his mom yeah <laughs> uh, well, she's the brains of the opera he Got just it. listens she'll yeah. explain this to him when you're done all, all right. right so well so podcasting is really the number one benefit of is is accessibility right I can't listen to this on the go in my car in the shower when I'm getting ready when I'm doing all this stuff because I have to tune in at you know eight o'clock right every single Monday podcast I could I could save it and listen to it two months later down the road I can listen to it over and over and over and over and over again um, and it's it's good it's good conversation so it's it's informative it's entertaining it's basically all the needs that someone needs to be like engaged and stuff like that right so. Um, and you can do 30 episodes in a week and plan out an entire year's worth of content in, in a weekend. Right. So that's kind of like the benefits of it. And it's hot. So audio is like making a comeback mm -hmm. now, right? So audio, I mean, if you think about like Joe Rogan, who's a very, very, he's been doing a podcast for 10 years. I mean, his podcast, I mean, presidential candidates go on it. Like right. really popular people go on it. And it's got like the voice of like, a generation really like people will go to this podcast right. to learn things right. and it's insane so I guess for old timers like me that you know it, it's like such a vast amount of information out there so I'm guessing there's millions of podcasts right oh, for sure right yeah. so how do you what how are you going to promote our show that we're going to do like how, how does that like I wouldn't know how to begin with that so well I think all all of the all of the knowledge that you have which that's what kind of attracts me to you guys too is like you're so smart when it comes to dogs. Um, so well, like, it's it about it. Comes dogs. Comes dogs. Right. No, but I mean, if you like, honestly, of all my podcasts, yours was probably the more most, if not the most popular one. Really, and I had some very interesting people on. Right. Um, because uh, first off, your personality stuck stuck out, but the knowledge that you have is so interesting that people actually care enough to tune in. Oh, you know, there's so many whys to dogs. Like, I ask you all the time, why does Boomer do this? Why? 
I hear you, I listen, I don't follow the rules. Right, which is fine. Most people don't. But people want to know that. Right, stuff. no, absolutely. So that's why it's going to be an easy sell as far as people listening and gathering listeners. And you already have somewhat of a following, so that's that's going to help. All right. All right, so yeah, we're going to... So yeah, the, the news is we're going to now podcast. Yeah, yeah we're going to do a podcast. And we're creating a whole new, basically, show and library of content not only for our customers, but for our franchisees yes. so that we can continue to be, that can continue to be a brand differentiator for us. And when we go into new markets and we're, when we're promoting Houndstown, um, because of Mike's background and knowledge about dogs and dog management and dog psychology, that's a huge differentiator when it comes to competitors. So we're going to start to use that to help grow our, our house towns in new markets. Sure. Is this breaking news? With that, breaking is it breaking news? news? Oh, yeah. I'm coming, coming, coming along the news. wire. I don't even know. I usually have a breaking news segment. Breaking news. This breaking is breaking news. news. Dogs bite. Breaking news. Dogs have teeth. Breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> they breaking pee. news. Right. They pee, they pee and poop. Yeah. Breaking news. They hump, jump, and dump. Bre- okay. You get the idea. Yeah. I'm sorry, Corey. <laughs> no, this, no this is breaking news. But, um... Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, it's basically the same kind of content of your knowledge and everything like that, just broken down over a period of time. And and into in specific topics. Yes. So it'll be way more, like, it'll be way more, more focused. More focused, right. but also, I guarantee you, there is no other big box or any type of uh, doggy daycare that has a podcast, right? So, because they're going to be late to the party, right? But not only that, and I do agree. Like, there's content, and, and it, the, the content is important to people. I just, I and I just provide my perspective, perspective on things. You know, so there's a lot of things that we do besides doggy daycare. Meaning, you know, I go to court and I testify as an expert in some very interesting dog cases. We did a homicide yeah. case in North Carolina where they used a cadaver dog, and we can explore them a little bit more in detail. Well, exactly what I was going to say is, you know, you can have guests, you can have former, you know, if you have police friends. I don't have friends in the police yeah, market, yeah. no. Well, you have friends in general. No, I have friends. And Tom Saul living down there. Tom Saul, he's really And right. his mom. So that's two people we can have. But... <laughs> We can talk about that though. The yeah, police department. What I'm saying is, you can have like how we did our podcast. Yes, yeah, exactly. You can have that same feel and same kind of, you right. know, because if, if you talk about dogs, it'll be dog related in some yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Shape or form. It's always a connection. But exactly, there'll it's always, always be a connection. connection. Right. All right. We only have three minutes. Three minutes left. I want to talk about the our partnership with the Michigan Humane Society. Yes, I just want to make one point. My experience with working with with the police department in the '80s was like working in the mafia, all right? So listen to our podcast, yeah. and, and we'll talk about Well, that's about an interesting tease. It's a tease. Podcast. I'll tease so it with that and tease when my dog found a head in the snow. It's in my podcast. You got that in your podcast. Yeah. So we have these little interesting stories back in my drinking days. Okay, the Humane Society. So this is a great partnership, and actually our friends... Pete and Kristen out of Detroit came up with this. Prior to them even opening, they've done two or three events, and they've nurtured this relationship with the Michigan Humane Society. So what we're doing is doing what we call a fresh air fund for dogs, meaning we're going to uh, partner with the Humane Society in Detroit. They're going to bring three, four, five dogs on a specific day to play and just be dogs. They get out of there wherever they are, they are right now in shelters or people's homes. They're going to come to Detroit, Metro Detroit, maybe on a Tuesday. We haven't done the, the, the nuances of it. The dogs are going to get dropped off. They're going to have a day of humping, jumping, and dumping without getting yelled at, without getting screamed at. We're going to give them a nice spa bath because that's one of the services that we do. And it's going to be something really, you know, it's going to be a win-win for everyone. It's a win-win for uh, Kristen and Pete, it's a win-win for us. So Houndstown Charities, that's what we do. We have it, and, and Corey qu- quite correctly said, it always has dogs and humans. There's always that connection. Uh, so we're really excited about that. If it works in Detroit, we're going to try to do that. We want to become a partner with the Humane Societies across the country because really it's been phenomenal for me personally to see over the past six or seven years I've been involved with Houndstown to see how many dogs we've had through the Fresh Air Fund and the experience they have just getting out of the shelter for one day and yeah. getting to play and interact with other dogs, interact with our staff. Right. It is it means everything to these right. dogs. 
it makes them more socialized. It makes them more adoptable. Oh, absolutely. Um, we, you know, and our, our Bergen franchisees, Stephen Anthony, have developed this relationship with the Bergen County Animal Shelter. They've had dozens of dogs come through their doors. They've adopt. They've helped to adopt out and change about a dozen dog lives. Right. So it's definitely. Really meaningful, right. and it's something that you know the charity is right. going to look and it, to partner with going forward. Absolutely, and it's simple. We do other programs, handcuffs to healing. We do all kinds of other things, but there's a lot more mechanics to it. So right now, we're going to roll out this simple fresh air fund, starting in Detroit as a pilot program. Hopefully, we're going to roll it out nationally. But while I only have a minute left. I want to talk about the Brookhaven Animal Shelter. So last time we were on, we had a dog named Clutch. Remember Clutch, uh, Danielle? Danielle's sleeping. All right, she wasn't here. She was out partying somewhere. I was in Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, you were in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Oregon, sorry. We had this dog, Clutch. Guess what? He came on our show. He's adopted. adopted. He's adopted. Ooh, we're, next oh. week, we're going to have Sarah. The dog's name is Sarah. She's going to be being handled by Karen from the Brookhaven Animal Shelter. It's a two-year-old husky up for adoption, and we want to kind of video or, or show her progress. We've, we started working with her today. She's going to be here next Monday. I'm also going to have a guest from the Hempstead Animal Shelter and the Brookhaven Animal Shelter here Monday night, Facebook Live. Follow us. Watch for Sarah. She's cool. She's a two-year-old. She's a stray. She ran away. She needs the right person to be her uh, family member. Not just anybody, the right person. So we're very selective about that. So join us next Monday. Follow us on all of this social media crap that everybody does here, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> all right.